Thank you. So our next speaker is Dr. Frederic Vassai. He is from France. He visited also our last conference and I am happy to have him here again. So please start. Hello, so everybody uh, thank you. Uh, hello, <laughs> I'm Frédéric Lassiaille and uh, I'm, I'm glad to present to you uh, my research work. I'm uh, uh, an engineer and uh, um, I've been working on this uh, research work for 20 years as a hobby uh, at first and then uh, it became uh, much more prominent. And uh, I also uh, have worked on, uh, on maths six years after my diploma of engineer. So I have some background of mathematics. So first of all, I would like to thank you, uh, Professor Kizek, to, inv uh, to, think, to invite me uh, to this conference. And uh, I'll start uh, before starting uh, in the detail of the presentation. I'm um, really glad to uh, tell you some words about uh, some very small words about my research work. So it's a, it's a work in, a, in a relativ relativity. It's about relativity. And I've uh, constructed uh, two models, two models. The first model is uh, called surrounding. I call it surrounding. It deals only with uh, astrophysical uh, distances, astrophysical scales. I must say that personally, I found uh, it's uh, not, not its result, but its behavior quite astonishing in front of uh, our experimental uh, mystery. That's the first point. The it's a standalone uh, model. And, uh, the second one, the second point, is about the, the, f the primary model, which is, not, which is not surrounding, and which can be uh, seen, in fact, as uh, the, um, the search in relati relativity about um, the mathematical point, uh, mathematical, mathematical view of, uh, for general relativity. And uh, it's mainly uh, watching relativity in, in duality. As, as, uh, I will go further uh, in detail on this point. So let's go uh, in the detail of the presentation. So uh, I, um, I printed this image because I found it very interesting in uh, describing the surrounding concept, the concept of surrounding. I will, uh, I will explain it later. And I find it very, very nice also. So the introduction is, uh, uh, is this, okay, okay, it started in 99, I wrote four articles. The content of the presentation will be this one. So I will go in the global research work very quickly and we, we, I will uh, fin finally uh, go in detail of the two models I've been talking. And uh, finally, I will address uh, the uh, experiments which are related. And finally, we go back to general relativity remarks. The research work as a whole. So it became the, the first idea uh, I had, uh, I had them when I was around 24. I went to present it, uh, to present them to a, a physicist uh, in Marseille. And he gave me a very good remark. And then it started. It's quite a long ago. <laughs> Okay, and this is a functional diagram of the research work. There we, you can see that at first, so you can see the, the two models I was talking about. But it, it started primarily at the origin of the research work. It started there. This is a very rough and, uh, uh, let's say, a very big, a rough and a draft uh, document of a, a of the pattern of a uh, unifying theory. It is off, but nevertheless, it gave me the idea of this model. And this model is quite more simple, but it begins to give interesting behavior. 
from it, I deduced a, a, a never simpler, simpler, simpler um, uh, formulation, which is the surrounding model. This one is a standalone one, so it means that it can, it, it can lie completely or independently, independently of the others. But at the same time, it illustrates the behavior of this one at astrophysical distances. I had a little, little trip in, uh, to uh, particle physics. I won't go in detail about this. It's a very, very little trip, very, very, very short. And this is also what I was talking about, it may be the suggested experiment. So we go into the, the presentation one, two, three, four. So we were, in one, we were actually in one, and we go in two. So those are the papers re which are related to, the, to those different parts. So th this is a paper of the surrounding of uh, the conference of today. Of the, this is a paper of the conference of today, sorry. It is based on, on this one, which has to be completed, I must say. Uh, we go uh, to this in detail. There is a remaining work here. But nevertheless, uh, I, the, the, nevertheless, the results are, I'm quite confident about the results. It, 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 there is a remaining work here. This is the surrounding model. Okay, so let's go. Let's go into the gravitational model of the three elements. So we are here now. So what are the motivations about, for this model? There are three moti main motivations. This one is, right. so this one is uh, full of uh, polemics, so I won't go in details, but nevertheless it's a motivation. This one is about losing information when you create the matter density. It's a multiplication of the mass of a particle with the density of such particles. When you, when you only focus on O, you lose information of either M and either N. And N. And mainly, this is, a, this is the, uh, the, the most important uh, motivation. It's the fact that uh, already in relativity, there exists two types of matter, two types of energy, should, should write. Right. Energy is only constructed from one type only. I go into this slide here, explaining this in detail. The remarks about general relativity is that there is matter in motion at the speed of light. Then, if so, it is true in every, in every, in every frame. But the, the rest is composed of matter in, at rest, of course. So, um, GR is constricted, GR, general relativity, is constricted only from matter at rest, as we know. So the idea is to try with matter in motion. Why not? The, the pro and cons are here, mainly. The result is that the assumption is that matter is made up of, of particles always moving at the speed of light. That is, in the microscopic level. The qubit, maybe it's that it here is a degenerated stress energy tensor, but it's not a really an issue because this is a mean stress energy tensor. The advantage is that the four momentums are more isomorphic with associated boosts. We will go further on this point. So let's go further. I wrote a paper with the the notion, the, the help, the, the mean of the assumptions, because it's easier to write. But in fact, in those four assumptions, there is only one here. This is a real assumption. Those one can be uh, argued to, to be, uh, uh, they can be motivated by uh, general relativity and by other means. But I didn't want to go into the full complicated uh, uh, di discussion about uh, whether it should be uh, really an, an assumption or not. So that's why uh, I, I make my work easy. So I have to say that I have uh, not very much time, so I have to, to find bias to, to, go, to go quickly. 
let's go the, to the whole picture. This is the whole picture of the gravitational model of the three dimensional story. You start from an individual particle, those particles which are moving at the speed of light. So this is uh, drawn, drawn the, the picture of the trajectory of the, such a particle in space. It has a form momentum like this. It propagates a sp uh, space-time deformation. This is the shape of the space of the envelope of the space-time deformation. This is a gravitational wave. It, it propagates in space. This is a shape, shape in space. And uh, during the propagation, the energy decreases also, of course. And then what did we get finally? is a space-time, we get finally the encounter of such cones in space, which is a grid like this. And we have to calculate the, uh, on the, each of these intersection of cones, you have to calculate, to calculate sorry, the addition of the four momentum coming from two cones. Then you get another form of momentum, except that this one is not at the speed of light anymore. So that's what is going on at the X location. Now from then, from, the, from, from there here, the, the form momentum, you deduce a boost, a boost, uh, which describes the space-time structure. Why? So let's remember a little reminder about the general relativity. That's the reminder. So it's quite, uh, it should uh, require maybe more long time, uh, more time to, to, to explain that. But when you have a particle in motion in a Minkowskian flat space time, it gets a form momentum. And uh, from, from this form mention, term, sorry, you can deduce the space-time deformation generated by the motion of the particle. A particle mo in motion in a frame generates a space-time deformation. That's already in GR. That's what I'm claiming. In order to, conv to, be, con to, to be convinced by that, just imagine a thought experiment in which you take a particle, you, the universe, and you progressively inverse the role of the particle and the universe. At the end of the, of the process, the universe will be meaningful, meaning uh, we will have no, no matter in it, or may, nearly no matter, and the particle will, will endorse the role of the universe. Then at this point, you have, you, you have exactly the, the, the opposite effect uh, with respect to the usual effect we have today. The, the usual effect we have today is that the particle, uh, the, 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 sorry, the, the, um, for, you, have, you have to take the, the example of the uh, twin paradox to be, to be more precise. If, if, you, uh, oppo, uh, if you change the roles, you, you change the, the older time, the, the frame in which your time elapses the most. Okay, so it's was a reminder. It, it, it should be uh, required to, to go more in detail in this, but from a point of view, it is a reminder. Please tell me if I'm wrong. <laughs> I have to do quickly. <laughs> okay, so, may, okay, so, so this is, this is to, to explain why here, the boost it describes the space-time deformation coming from this form momentum. And then, then uh, since this is only occurring at the, at the, at those, in those lines, uh, before those lines, or before, sorry, before those points or after, there is a change. So therefore, the metric is, is changing according to this boost. This boost in, induces the change of metric here. So you, you, you find the boost and you find also a rescaling of units here, S, which is required of flow, 
according to, to some more constraints, which you can find in my paper, the first paper. So uh, let's go further. Now, there is an invariance break. So, so all this stuff are, are transformed in the Lorentz transform in the same manner, all this one also, but it's not the same manner between here and here. It's always an invariance break, but not the same way between here and here. Therefore, the result is that what you find here is not a, um, an independent metric, it's a privileged frame. So it, it, it may appear as, as a, a big problem, but when you examine well, it's also the solution. Why? Because when you start from this kind of thing here, it's matter in motion, what you calculate is a first, deri first derivative. You don't calculate a curve, you do not calculate a curvature like in GR. You calculate directly the first derivative. As doing so, you identify a privileged frame. That's quite, uh, of course, it should be found before. It should be something, uh, I, should have done, I should have said this before. <laughs> the whole picture um, induces induce a, a remark, induces a remark, which is the following, an important remark. When I say that a boost is used from a, a boost is used from, from a form momentum, in the whole picture, which I remind here, please, uh, you have to add two form momentum, and you get a boost, and then you, and then you, okay, you get the metric. If you have only one, you have only one here. If you if you take uh, two of such things, you get two boosts. If you get those two boosts, the operation is a composition here. You get two boosts. Here it's an addition. So you need to have a, a, an isomorphism so between here and here. An isomorphism, or morphism between the set of four momentums with addition and the, and the corresponding set of boosts with composition. The, the domain of this morphism is exactly the set of four momentum associated with the speed of light. That's a good news. That's a very good news. Now let's go back to for, from the let's go back to the presentation from the four assumptions. So this is a, a rewriting of what I've been writing before. This is a D1 plus D2, written in a quite classical way in GR. Okay. Now let's go to the spherically symmetric static case. So the one who, which, which would uh, give us the Schwarzschild metric. This is the equation or the model. We try to apply it to this case. The problem I have is that, is that, is, is that here is the remaining work. I have done this work very quickly at first. And then when I went into the formalizing process, I didn't uh, thought to, that it was uh, mandatory to, 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 to go again in this uh, process much more uh, rigorously. I, thought I didn't uh, do this work. What I've been doing is a simple project projection of this equation along the, along the, the line uh, the line of uh, the axis, which is like the axis of the, the, axis of the spherically symmetric static case. So we get the object, the object which is the attracting object, and the, the ray around, and you project the project the equation on the right. It's a very simple uh, calculation. It should be much more, um, much more complicated because it's 3D, three-dimensional, it's dis discrete, discrete also. So it's possible to do that, but I'm, I, that's something again I, I need time to do, to, do, to, do this, to do this, sorry. What I found is that when you uh, calculate with two IP only, so that is uh, here, that is two, uh, two, two terms in the on in, in the equation, what you find is an irre irrelevant result uh, when, uh, when, you, when you 
and can calculate Newton's law for, uh, for large distances. It's irrelevant. Therefore, it, it, it implies that you have to calculate for, with free IP. Then you get a relevant result. The good news is that even in this case here, you find the surrounding effect here also. It means that why it's free IP, it means that you have to calculate on the nodes, on the nodes only, not on the lines. The possible physical explanation for that is that the, the wave, the gravitational wave, should merge that, themselves quickly. So, uh, beyond, beyond this uh, assumption, I have to calculate this in 3D and in discrete mode. Nevertheless, the, no, so this is a simple projection I was talking about. And it gives this, this. And finally, it, get, it gives us the modification of Newton's law. This is Newton's law here. And uh, the model calculates in this way a uh, um, modification factor here, where S is a function of matter density. Matter density around the location where we are located. That is, if, for example, if the door is attacking me, I am located here and I want to measure the force. So in order to do so, I have to calculate first matter density around me. Then I get the S here. Then it modifies Newton's law. By the way, we calculate on a value of G. Which I wanted to put this slide because it, I think it's quite rare in, the, in physics to have such an equation of G even though it's an approximation only for the large distances. Large distances are the most common case, of course. Let's go now to the surrounding model. As I said, this is a model which is completely autonomous, but it, its idea comes here, from here. And also, its, its behavior is exactly the behavior of this one for uh, large, uh, large scales. So the creation of it, historically, if I can say so, is, is coming from the equation of the last model I show you here, with this term. It's uh, the remark that this term is nothing more than the derivative of this one here. Therefore, it goes a simple classical potential, which has, of course, its relativistic version. And then when noticing that S is proportional to the square root of a matter density, you obtain something like that. But this is too simple in order to, to retrieve all the explanation of all the gravitational mysteries. So that's why I computed it a little bit using a homogra homographic function, like this. And finally, I get this. So a little explanation about the, about the variables. Rho is a mass density at the location where the force is applied. As I said, here, I'm located here and I have to calculate the matter density around me in a 15 kiloparsec radius, in a sphere of 15 kiloparsec radius. And then I can calculate how much I am attracted by this door. So we have to <laughs> close it. <laughs> yes, and uh, so this part here is only composed of variable matter densities, and this is a constant. So, in other words, you divide the mass of the, of the door. In some way, you divide it by itself. If I'm too close to it, finally, we divide, you divide everything. So that's the main phenomena which explain, which allows for the model to explain many, many gravitational mysteries. So this is a relativistic version of it and the surrounding Lagrangian have been calculating. I, um, I, ho I hope someday to find, when I will have time, to find a, a, to find a, a formulation with a, a, a fraction, a ratio here. But it's not uh, done at, <laughs> at all. Uh, so this is uh, showing you that, I, I, I told you that the surrounding was autonomous. So this, is, this is why. When you start from the Poisson formulation of uh, uh, the Newton's law, and you uh, apply the classical comma goes to the rule, you obtain 
such an equation, <laughs> which is well known. But okay, but you, you can you can complicate a little bit and add here a multiplicating multiplying or coupling coupling tensor, a coupling tensor here, which is a mixed tensor. This is just the, this is the idea of surrounding effect. What remains is to say what is this, exactly this what a coupling tensor. Of course, it should be a, a function of, of a matter, of what is existing. And the idea is to, to choose not the, what is existing there, but what, what is existing around me. So it's an autonomous uh, model. So now we will go uh, qu quickly, if you want, into the behavior of the surrounding model in front of each gravitational mystery. mystery. Most of them, not because they are very numerous. The main, main, main one, maybe. Virial theorem is quite uh, easy to find with such a homographic function. It's quite a fitting mechanism. I will not... Uh, uh, okay. This is more difficult to fit. This is a simulation. This is a program I've been writing uh, and uh, re um, repeating exactly the work of uh, Dr. Hall in 1971, which wrote a fantastic program, a very easy program, very simple program, because at, at this uh, time it was not possible to do something complicated. And uh, I, I retrieve those, with this program, I retrieve this kind of Split, pro split profile, I, which I, I can say nothing more than it's, it's quite astonishing to see how it works when you see the, the simulations. Okay, okay, you know what the observation data give us. This is a funny story, very funny. When I saw this the first time on my PC, it was here, it is here. Uh, I thought that there were a bug in the program. I thought really, I really thought that. And the day after, then I, I thought again and I said, say, oh, maybe. I had to search on the internet. And then I searched on the internet and, and I, I found it. Effectively, I found it. Uh, I uh, watched it, uh, watch it long ago, but uh, I didn't take it. So I was uh, very, uh, very happy. <laughs> so let's go to the structure. The structure of the galaxy, that's why I wanted to take time because maybe I wanted to show you the, the small video. So I will explain before a little bit. So this is again the same program of Dr. Hall, except that. At first, it's completely Newton's law. And progressively, I will insert the new model, the Sorenin model. I have to do it progressively because otherwise it, it explodes completely. So, so uh, it goes like this. Maybe I, I went too, too far, too fast, sorry. So I go again. So this is Newton's law, oh, oh sorry. So this is Newton's law at first. And then now it's surrounding. You can already see the beginning of dwarf, gal dwarf galaxies here. Professor Popa is not here, but uh, maybe he, he could take notice of it. The dwarf galaxies. And you can already see the beginning of a ring galaxy. And the nucleus inside of the ring is, is moving into a bar. Now it's exactly a bar. And it's a bar which is rotating very quickly into the solar galaxy. Now there are, there are many dwarf galaxies around. And the arms are beginning to unroll very, very much. as you can see. Voila, okay. 
Yes, that's what it. So I have, I have, of course, a better video on my site if you want to see. I have to go back to the presentation, sorry. Ah, there. In the sheet. Okay. One moment. Uh, we'll go to full screen mode. Okay. So let's go uh, further. I was wondering if there were. Ah, yes. I was. Yes. I, I have a thing, something else to add. Two things about the structure. As you can see in the video, uh, you start from uh, an elliptical, you get a ring, you get an arm, you get an arm roll, arm galaxy, and finally you get a ring. And if you pursue, if, if, the, if, the, if it is not shown, but if you continue this process, you obtain finally uh, an explosion of, of all this. The galaxy is solved comple quite completely, but not completely. It, it remains something which is a, exactly a faint galaxy, a faint elliptical galaxy. That's the first point. The second point is that it, it gives us a clue that maybe all the, all the different types of galaxy, which we know, elliptical, uh, arm, etc., ring, etc., are not different galaxy, but, galaxies, but in fact different ages. Okay, there is a baby, the adult, the older. It's the same for galaxy. That's just a clue which is given by the, by the model. It's not a proof, of course. It's just a clue. So now, maybe the pilot cluster, as uh, you were talking before. Not very nice picture. Fantastic picture. So we, when you calculate the potential of the attacking gas, it's not exactly a neutrino, but it's a simple uh, division. Now, you, you, uh, you uh, makes a simple division I, I was talking about. When you, I'm coming to the door, the mass of the door is dividing the mass of my surrounding. So therefore, it's a little bit more complicated than the door. You have to ca calculate the convolution, of course. This is Newton's convolution, and this is a new uh, model convolution. You divide all the, the, the stuff. And you, obtain, you even obtain something very interesting on the edge of the ridges of the convolution because it's not exactly the same support function. So it makes uh, very interesting uh, results at the, at the edges here. When, the, when there are suddenly no matter at all, you think, you think this equation gives a, a little edge. And uh, I'm, okay. I would say that I've been noticing such a thing in the observational data. But it's quite, it's quite a question, question mark, question mark. Okay, so this is uh, what I simulated, uh, I've been simulating with my, another program of mine, very simple one. So this is what calculates Newton's, new Newton's law, and this is a new model. This is reality, so you have to check which one is a more, okay, the better. It can be seen maybe it's more, more visible here. This is a really a no effect of the gas. Of course, the simulation uh, executes this, this equation. So it, it deludes completely the, the effect of the gas. So let's go to now to, now to the, the issue of large scale structures. Okay, well known problem issue. So here are two, two points. First point, in a void, G is 40 times greater. So this could be, of course, this could be the result of a fitting, of course. The world voids are completely wiped out by a 40 times uh, greater G, of course. But more than that, the, pre the model is predicting a equilibrium, which has this equation. This is matter density, the wall, the void. It's no longer a sinusoid like Newton so could, uh, could uh, calculate. Equilibrium, but oh, more, even more, it's a stable equilibrium, something stable. Now in cosmology, the same effect again. We divide the mass of the door by the mass of my surrounding, and you obtain a, a pure decitor, or a decitor universe. So 
So everything is solved very easily. K is equal to zero, Q minus one. What can be done more simple than that? I don't know. <laughs> Problem, maybe 100 year, giga year, sorry. For the, la for the time since last question in prediction is much more than to <laughs> today on the CDM value. But nevertheless, with this value, high Z clusters are, are predicted, and the existence of very big galaxies and old galaxies, their existence is much more possible now. As I said sometime in one conference, I said, but maybe the older is better. But there were young people, so it was not a funny joke. No, no, it's a, it's a, it's a bad joke, sorry. So what remain? So this remain, but it's, um, it's not, not so much uh, an issue. The galaxy mass uh, to some proportional energy. Tully Fisher relation. So, um, okay, two years ago, it was uh, the Dr. Mago who told me uh, to, to, to calculate more uh, about that because, uh, okay, so I, I, um, I am modified my, my program just to, to, to test if I could find this equation. I can effectively, effectively I can find this uh, relation if I suppose that the size of the surrounding sphere, the famous 15 kiloparsec, is not fixed to 15 kiloparsec, but is, is proportional to the square root of the galaxy size. Then if I, when I suppose this, then I obtain the exact to the Fisher relation. It's a very, very, very straight, straight line. So, okay. And another point is that when I suppose this, I didn't make the, the simulation, but oh, I'm sure that will, it will help very much the simulations of the speed profiles of the galaxy. Because I, I, I didn't uh, tell it, but for the small galaxy, the sp the speed profile are not very good today with 15 kiloparsec sphere. Of course, if I, if I reduce the size of the, the, of the, uh, the, the surrounding sphere, it will uh, correct the immediate, quite, quite immediately the, this issue. And we, we I didn't get the time to, to do this, but uh, very, very much confident that this row will help this and also the speed profile. Speed profiles. So let's go to the the, the, the point of the experiments. So there are two kinds of experiments. They are coming either from here and from here. Of course, if they are coming from here, they are also coming from here, as I said. So there are cutting test and suggested experiments. Cutting test is something which can, can validate or not the different models. Suggested experiment is nothing more than an idea for some uh, experimental physicist in order to, to, to to search for new physics. It's related to uh, a prediction of a model, of course, but it's a slight prediction of the model. A light, light prediction of the model. So let's start with the cutting test. The, the most, uh, there are many uh, cutting tests coming from surrounding itself, so but therefore it's astrophysical scale. The maybe maybe uh, the more the more uh, interesting is this one. I will go into this one. And uh, there is only one laboratory uh, cutting test I found. There are, no, no, there are, there are one more, but uh, it's not exactly a cutting test. So this is only a cutting test in the laboratory. So I will go into this one and this one. So this one first. Surrounding effect in the intergalactic medium. Intergalactic medium. So we are in the intergalactic medium. So the, the equation of the surrounding model, the surrounding model is simplified. The, the ratio of the equivalent, equivalent G is proportional, is inversely proportional to matter density. Matter density in the surrounding sphere. Rho here. That's the matter density in the surrounding sphere. Rho U is a universe mass density. So it, it's quite a constant. It's a constant. Uh, with respect to the AGM. Also, the cosmological critical matter density. So, I imagine with my short view that maybe it could be possible to, to, to test this, this thing with a uh, weak mass reconstruction, but uh, this is a question mark. 
This is a question mark. Is it possible to, to test this? So let's go to the, uh, the second uh, cutting test, which is uh, possible what, in what I call laboratory. In fact, this is maybe not exactly laboratory because uh, it's a 300 meter pipeline. <laughs> oh, it's a big laboratory. There is no, at first, there is no water in it. And then we put water in it falling at 10 meters per second. Here it's an interferometer when I imagine two mirrors, the first one which is fixed here on the ground and this one is located close to the pipeline. So at first the pipeline is empty, the mirror is at rest with the frame of the laboratory. Then we put water in it 10 meters per second. The model is predicting a motion of the mirror in the opposite sense. This is not something new, in fact, it's already the case in general relativity. Please tell me if I'm wrong. But here the, 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 the values are given quite easily. I imagine that if I, I want to do the same kind of calculation with general relativity, it will take some time. So this uh, ratio here is calculated, calculated here. So it's, big, it's a, a function of matter, uh, matter density. So the model is able to calculate it. It cal calculate it. Sorry, it's very low, very low. Therefore, uh, if you get those values 10 meters per second and uh, get those values one hour of measurement, uh, the, the, the prediction is is a displacement of the mirror of this value, which is very, very low. Maybe with the future Calderon interferometer, it might be possible. Problem is that here, the precision is, is uh, supposed to be instant, instantaneous. <laughs> here it's one hour, so it's not so obvious. And for that reason, maybe, maybe much more other reasons, of course. So this is uh, the suggested experiment. Mm -hmm. The most important one, from a, from, a, from a potent view, is this one. Maybe those, those one can, might be very interesting also, about the violation of linearity of gravitational fields. But we will go in depth in this one, if you want. So the model suggests, not predict, suggests an evolution of the Planck constant. With what? With the surrounding model, the surrounding matter density. If I change the surrounding matter density, then I change the equivalent G, as, as I say. So the suggestion is that maybe I change also the Planck constant. There are um, quite good reasons for that, for expecting such a thing. Therefore, the, the, the experiment is very easy because, very easy, no. Easy to understand, sorry. It, it already, exists an interferometer with two arms and then we have the same frequency for the two arms of course of course the idea is to put water in the surrounding in the surrounding of only only one arm and the model is predicting a change of frequency a difference of frequency between this one and this one for the same for the same light it means this kind of relative difference, always quite the same order or magnitude of the, the di uh, relative difference. Therefore, um, same kind of difficulty, except that this, this, this time, the, uh, oh, sorry, now there is no one hour, maybe there is no one hour, there, we can go quicker, quickly. No, there is no, sorry, sorry, there is no time, it's immediate. No, sorry. You have to measure the same light. You have to measure the same light, so it's an instantaneous measurement. You don't have, you don't have the, caveat, the caveat of the one hour of the previous experiment. Okay, and one more. Uh, what more, what more to, to say? Okay, so I, I don't know uh, the, the details, huh? of course. It's uh, only it's illustrative. I call it illustrative experiments, of course. 
Back to the motivations, the theoretical motivations. So, uh, as I said, uh, the motivation as a construction of the surrounding is a complicate, complicating the comma goes to semicolon rule. That's the first, that's, that's for surrounding. Now, for the, for the second model, the gravitational model of the freedom and theory, that is, exact, that, that is um, the main mot motivation, in fact. I told you uh, uh, on the beginning of the presentation about this motivation. Let's go back to it. In general relativity, I claim that there is a mathematical duality in the algebra, the specific algebra of uh, relativity between matter at rest, matter in motion. Of course, GR is constricted from matter at rest. Then we deduce calculate a curvature. That's the main equation, and calculate directly in curvature, of course, as you know. But if we want to have, to know, to, if, we, if we want to, to, to know what is going on with matter in motion, it's much more complicated. And so if we want to know what is going on with the first derivative, then it's also much more complicated. But we have, we have to calculate the first derivative. For example, when, we, when it comes to explain the twin paradox in the, in the theoretical uh, domain. Because you can suppose that uh, the roles of the twins might be exchanged, as I said before, in the theoretical field. So you have to calculate it. Uh, it's a local and continuous. Starting from matter in motion is exactly the dual part of it. It starts from matter in motion, it calculates the first derivative. You have to calculate, it's more, much more complicated. So that's, that's, that's the, first, the first equation that calculates you, for you, the first derivation. See, if you want to, to know what is going on with matter at rest, you have to calculate very much, uh, much more. And you have to calculate also the curvature. It's not obvious at all in this, in this, in this process. It's not local, it's global. Why is it global? Because it uses the gravitational wave coming from all over the universe. It's a discrete, discrete equation, a discrete metric. And uh, those, those are the pros and cons. Okay. Okay, so this is uh, what next? Now, what next? So as I said, uh, there is a remaining work. As I said, calculation must be refined. There is a cosmological case. The model, uh, the, the model, the gravitational model of the theory calculates, uh, probably it calculates an expansion, but uh, I have to do this calculation. Quite, I'm, I am quite confident, but I have to do. And um, this is, a, this is another idea of calculation of GR. In GR, there are many ideas of calculation. Uh, which are suggested by the model. Suggested by the model. The surrounding calculation, of course, the surrounding model is not uh, complete, is not explored theoretically. And of course, experimentation. Cavits and uh, limitations. So, uh, complicated, um, yes. It's not really a cavit because the uh, GR is complicated quite a bit also. Uh, well, these are not, this is quite um, uh, deprecated. This is quite deprecated now. The so surrounding here, uh, what, uh, yeah, there is a problem with this, but it is not really an issue because, uh, because the uh, model is not pretending to, to explain the microscopic scale. There is an issue here, but it's not really an issue because the model is not okay. The Q is not equal to, like, to minus one. That was something which was, uh, I, had a, I had a remark on it. Q is not exactly minus one. And uh, the alpha parameter, okay. I, will, I didn't talk about it, so sorry. So I'm searching for collaboration because uh, as, I, as I said, I have uh, very few, uh, I, am, I am alone on this work and I have no time mainly. I'm working as an engineer and uh, I'm not uh, a researcher. So 
I'm looking forward for any kind of collaboration. What uh, about the theory, numerical calculation, experiment, and how those kind of maybe, so those are ideas I, I had, but I can uh, put myself in one hour, in one year, sorry, one hour, so it's not enough. One year uh, availability for any kind of uh, work like this, full time, one hour, one year, if possible. And uh, summary. So we have been watching that uh, those models are, um, can be seen uh, as a dual mathematical process, which leads to the gravitational model of the three mass theory. A more complicated comma goes to semicolon hold, leading to surrounding. So, so they are a modification of Newton's law. The model's behavior at large scale is, uh, is illustrated by surrounding, a simplified by the standard version. And uh, I'm looking forward for any kind of collaboration. Thank you.